Your bath is drawn, Mrs. Kelly. Uh, and I've popped a Dom 56 in Mr. Kelly's private stock. Your beluga's beside the tub. Thank you, Harvey. Will there be anything else before I leave? <laughs> honey, honey, no. Yes. I've got a meeting in an hour. Great, the quickie. Oh. Nothing rumpled above your cummerbund, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> a little bubbly first, madame. <laughs> I would fire my real butler for that. Mm, that's good champagne. You did get that from Roland Stock, didn't you? <laughs> We'd die. I'll replace it. Uh, don't bother. There'd be a lot more than his high-class champagne missing when he gets back. Like maybe his wife. Harvey, don't joke around about stuff like that. Oh, I'm not kidding, Angel. This little guy. It's our ticket out of here. Enough dirt on a certain Palm Beach biggie to make him pay dearly for my silence. That's why I'm going to this meeting tonight. Harvey, what are you talking about? Who's this biggie? No, 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 it's a surprise. I'll tell you when I get back. Oh, we'll celebrate big. You're talking about blackmail, aren't you? I'm talking about us flying out tomorrow and writing our dear Jones on the way to Paris. Mm -hmm. Well? We've got seven minutes to spare, madame. We don't have any money to spare, are we? Thank you, All right, <laughs> just a quickie. <laughs> but then I'm history. When a high point in your social life is trying a new kind of frozen pizza, a night out can be a very big deal. And the next morning is not the time for an early wake-up call, especially not from the guy that you see regularly. Strictly on business, that is. Almost always ugly business. Chris? Oh, Rita, you look like... Are you sick? I put in for this day off a week ago, remember? One lousy day. I'm just, I forgot. Look, why didn't you say something when I called? Yeah, well, it hurt to talk, Sam, and it still does. Uh, big night? Who's the guy? Why don't you tell me? What? Oh, uh, guy's name is Harvey Lane. No wallet, found his business card in the car. He was shot once right in the pump. You know what, Sam? I want you to go home and get some sleep, all right? I'll solo. No, 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 no. You, would, you wouldn't have called me at 6 a.m. any day of the week just for a routine robbery homicide. Now, would you, Sam? Hmm? No, I wouldn't. Why would this guy be at the beach by himself in a tux, huh? The time of death was roughly between 6 and 10 o'clock last night. No way. Well, th this place stays busy at least till midnight, and this, this guy was not shot in a crowd. You got it. So what do you think? You up for coming to his office with me? Check it out? 
Sure. Just uh, take it easy on the turns, man. Stop by and get a chili dog somewhere. Ah. Oh. Well, looks like Harvey does all right. Yeah, hustler for the idle rich. How's your headache? Sam. What? I can move my tongue without it hurting. I think I'll live. Good. Take a look at this. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Nice. A lot nicer than his wife. Wait a minute. What, what makes you so sure that that's not his wife? Yeah. Husband, wife, mistress. Oh. Let's check the photographer ID. Huh. Solange. It is so nice seeing you both again. And anything I can do for you, Detective Lorenzo, it will be my great pleasure to supply. What's going on here? I'm for positioning you. No, 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 no. You misunderstand. No, this, this, this. Uh... Oh, you, Rita. You are so pretty. No, no, Swans, I'm talking about this. this oh, is this is a magazine commercial. Oh. Perfume. Very nice. You like it? It's a very big shoot for me. I love big shoots. I'll let you do it. So, aren't you always dressed like this for work? For some jobs, I do not dress at all. I'm very talented. You like French cuisine? I can't tell your next party. Actually, that sounds great, but uh, we just need some names to go along with these faces. Oh, one of George's gayness. George Bingham. Bingham. Bad lover. Good citizen. I donate art sculpture to his annual charity art auction. May I sculpture, boss? In the nude? Flies. Take a pill. More names, if you would. Avian and Lane and Mon ami Carla. Carla and Roland Calais. Calais, now is that like the French town, Calais? No, no, no. No, it's K-E-L-L-Y. Kelly. Calais. Calais. I, uh, I sleep with Roland occasionally. He and Carla don't get along? Oh, no. Did my ancestor, Marie Antoinette, get along with the guillotine? Hmm? No. Carla is middle class. Roland's Palm Beach society does not accept her, so things are... Very, very bad. Oh, baby. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm. <laughs> that feels great. <sighs> You're really good. You don't know how good. I give you both full body treatments tonight, we? Oh? Uh, We're gonna be tied up. Yeah, yeah. That's fine. If it turns you on, James. Yeah, a friend called and told me. It's really awful. Rowan and I were very fond of Harvin Hand. Is your husband home, Mrs. Kelly? No, uh, he's in Europe. Why? Why do you want to talk to him? Why do you even want to talk to me, for that matter? We were just an, uh, acquaintances. Is that right? What the hell do you want? Harvey's murder was made to look like a robbery. You have any idea why? You know why. The royal palms are esteemed upper crust. You know, they don't like scandal. So why don't you just write it off to some of your little riffraff doings, OK? Why are you even here checking it out, huh? Is it just for show? Is that it? Sounds like your royal palm buddies talk to you, not us. Those snobs don't talk to me. But I know their power. So did Harve. And he wouldn't stop fighting them. So if you had been killed, then he definitely would be trying to help us, right? Look, it wasn't just a fling, OK? We wanted to leave over a year ago, but Harv wanted money. and owned him. He didn't have a dime to his name. Their maid said that she's in St. Croix? Yeah. What do you want to bet she doesn't even make the funeral, huh? She's got a place there, you know? She has a place. I tried to tell Harv that money didn't matter, but, you know, I just... So, uh, he had dirt on some big name, okay? Dirt, that's all I know. He had a little disc and he went to George Bingham's last night to try and hit on somebody big. This Bingham, he's a big fundraiser? Yeah, he's a creep. <laughs> Tries to fill me up all the time. He's got a filthy mouth and all this Sister Teresa stuff. Mother Teresa. Whatever. He's still a creep, okay? <laughs> I don't know if he could do that to heart, but... If you're really gonna go after whoever did it, I'd really like to help. Because I think I really do owe it to Harv. I don't think so. 
Looks risky. Leads are thin. Politically, it could be a disaster. Well, Lieutenant, we've gone undercover with less, all right? The crime scene was fake. The victim's office was tossed. And plus, we've got Carla Kelly's story. Are you sure you aren't made yet? No, the only person that knows us is Carla and... Uh, Solange. Solange. Solange? Wait a minute. Solange who? Or what? Look, this could be good. This could be it. She could be our way in. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Would somebody please tell me who Solange is? Solange. She is a photographer. She's practically a celebrity. She is a regular in the social swim. And I have a feeling that she will cooperate with us. Mm -hmm. You have a feeling? I have a big feeling. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna have to set some things up. You need a credit history, family background, and I want you two to go easy on this. Society crime is a delicate item here. This society crime is a murder, Lieutenant. Just remember, this is Palm Beach. You do this, you have to stay cool. After all, you're going to be a very wealthy, well-bred young couple. <laughs> well, I guess that's why our check-in was delayed. They needed time to emboss us. No, they needed time to check us out. Might need more than cash to get into this place. You need a pedigree. Well, you have to admit, we have definitely pulled worse duty than this. We never played husband and wife before. No. We haven't. Kind of strange. Solange. Oui, oui. Come in. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. Yes, you look very nice too, Solange. Are we in? I try so hard to be close to you, Rita. Both of you. But we never seem to make it. I don't know why I'm trying so hard to help you. Could be that little incident that we pulled you out of. I think the DA called the corrupting public morals. Yes, the four men, the open convertible, you remember that? That was performance art. Ah, it's a good performance. Not to mention the snake. If the SPCA found out about that, they'd be all over your case. You didn't seem to mind. Yes, George Bingham knows that Jacques and Sheila Wellman of the Scarsdale Wellmans are here. Good. So he knows that we're here. Are we in? I'm so busy here. <clears throat> yes. Oh, thank you. The Wellmans. That's us. <clears throat> oh. We have been invited to a private party. Could you tell Mr. Bingham that we'll be there? It'd be great. What? Oh, yeah. Yes. A dollar? I didn't have a five. Up to the Wellman. Mm -hmm. oh. yeah. Yeah. Here, George, move in a little. A momento of the moment. Three of my favorites. George and uh, Sheila and Jacques. Oui? Jack, George wouldn't tell you this himself, but this little dinner party for you, it was all his idea. Well, then, to George. To George. To George. To George. I'd always heard that young Jackson Wellman III was a recluse. Well, Muff changed all that, right, Muff? <laughs> yes. Uh, actually, Jackie and I were thinking about taking a stroll on the beach later. We heard there was a murder. Is it safe? If you want ocean, we can arrange a yacht for you tomorrow. Well, better yet, Jack. I've got a 40-foot yardly sloop. That's fast. Ooh, fast girl. Sheila, how do you keep your fabulous figure? Oh, <laughs> no, actually, um, I just woke up with an upset stomach this morning. Rita. You've only been married a month. Well, Jack, be nimble, Jack, be quick. Oh. <laughs> If you all will excuse me for a moment. Thanks. Thank you, George. And there was a blurb in Forbes about your marriage. It said the Wellman family fortune could quite possibly retire the national debt. <laughs> well, I, I haven't heard Father say anything about paying it yet. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>
Carla, what are you doing here? Hi, nice party, huh? Nothing but the best for George, I suppose. Listen, uh, came to tell you guys that I gotta leave town tonight. It's a family thing. So, uh, sorry, no more help on my end. Wait, uh, do you have any idea why Bingham would give us this dinner party? I guess to see if young Jack has any real money of his own, huh? These bashes of George's cost about 50 grand a plate, so... Listen, I really gotta go. Good luck. All right, thanks. So, tomorrow night, huh, 50 a plate donation. Well, you know, after this bash that George threw this evening, I was thinking more along the lines of 500 a plate. Well, a toast to our first million dollar donor of the season. Come home a few days early, and what do I find, huh? You slut. How many people know? Nobody knows. All my friends? Oh, yes. You just had to prove that they were right about you, huh? Please stop. Oh, you love it rough. You do. Was was dead old hard rough, huh? Come on, precious. I want details. You're hurting was me. he rough? Fine! You want details? I'll give you details. But this one I don't think you're ready for. Oh yeah. Piece of cake. Now let's drop in on dear old George. Look, I still don't think this is a good idea. No, it's just a little game of follow the cash, and right now it's all headed in Bingham's direction. This little charity gala event that he's planning. Yeah, Solange said there's an annual auction with Dooley that art. He gets it for free, and he sells it for cash. Yeah, plus the fact this is where Harvey Ling was headed the night he was murdered. Wait a minute, you think that's motive enough for murder? Charity fund? Yeah, if it's a scam, it could be big bucks. Yeah, well, real big bucks when someone offers him 10 times and then he asks for it. Hey, all right, he said 50 a plate. I mean, in my world, you don't presume zeros. Well, that serves you right when you didn't discuss it with Muffin. I'd stay right here. Oh, you stay there too, Jack. I am so embarrassed about this. You know, it's these damn rental cars. I mean, this this never would have happened in the Ferrari. See, we were on our way back from the beach, and it just quit. <laughs> so we had to find a phone mm -hmm. and call for help. There's no phone in your car. Well, no, of course there's a phone in our car, but this is a rental car, and in rental cars, they don't have phones. <laughs> Figure that. Uh, we're, we're embarrassed. I, <laughs> I am not believing this. Yeah, it's incredible. That you just happened to wander up to my house. Funny thing, we were talking about that early. Stunning, we actually, were. stunning. That, that, right, Mom? Really, it, it's, it's embarrassing. I, so I, uh, I guess if the matter is all cleared up now. Well, it seems like there was a big misunderstanding here, eh, Mr. Bingham? Yes, of course. Best to forget the whole thing. Sorry to have troubled you, officers. No trouble at all. Have a good night. You'll spend the night, of course. Uh, well, no, well, no, we, we. No. George, look, we don't want to be any more bother. All right, we'll just call a cab. Not at this hour. And it's no bother. No, really, we don't mind. We couldn't. But you must. I have plenty of room. You might find you even like it better than the beacon. Really, I insist. Well, uh... George, if you sure. insist. <laughs> Good, then. It's settled. Excuse me, I'll see to your room. Mm, perfect setup, Sam. Yeah, a little too perfect. You know what? I think he wants us to stick around so he can check us out. Yeah, but he can't do that tonight, so I will take watch on his door and you can search. All right. Let's wait a couple hours, make sure he's down. Okay. Uh, your room will be ready shortly. And this is Claudette. Good evening. Uh, she'll assist you with any of your needs. Sleepwear, Claudette, in her way. You know, George, you have been so super about all this. I mean, first the dinner and now understanding about this. How can I repay you? You already have. Very generously. Oh, the pledge. The pledge. You know what? Why don't we go ahead? Take care of that now. What, what did we say? It uh, was uh, a, mil? a mil, I think, yes. Good round number? All right. Uh, who, who do I make this out to? Well, most donors prefer a bank draft. Checks are rarely used here. You got it. I'll call the bank first thing in the morning, and I'll have them send it to... Uh, we can take care of that in the morning. Brandy? Oh, thank you. Thank you. Darling. Well, you must be feeling better, Sheila. Yes. You said you broke down on the way home from the beach. 
Uh, yes, actually, uh, we took a midnight stroll in our scruffies, didn't we, darling? Right. And maybe a skinny dip? Did you have sex in the water? <laughs> George, you are such a kidder. No, you know, I saw Jaws five times. I don't fool around in the dark ocean. No. Uh, then you must be very aroused. I'll make sure your bed's ready. Thank you. Yeah. Social call. I'm gonna. Uh, I'm gonna go check it out. Do you think it's safe? A lot safer than staying up here. Yeah. Oh. Uh, 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 turn around. Why? Turn around. What? I'm gonna put my pants on. So. Turn around. Sherry doesn't do much business at home. Look at this. This guy must roll tape on all of his guests. He's a real sicko. <sighs> must have his own cataloging system. All the tapes have numbers, but there's no ID. This has got to be around here somewhere. But he's got cameras everywhere in this house. This guy could be home any minute. Yeah, well, he may be gone for the night. He may have gotten so aroused watching us that he went out and got a girl for himself. Rita. No, I know, Chris. We shouldn't talk about it now. This is not a good time to talk. We'll get it. We're not alone. Yeah, you know, fine. I will call the cab. Well, fine. You go ahead and call a cab. Mr. Wellman. Sorry to wake you. Had to use the phone. Oh, there's one in your room by the bed. I understand that. But it wouldn't dial out. Oh, uh, I'll go take a look for you. Thank you. Oh. Okay, well, we gotta get out of here. So. You know, I knew I never should have married you. My mother was absolutely right. And if this is the way it's gonna be, well, no, thank you. I heard the stories about you and your Aunt Nancy. I never thought they were true. You may be able to get away with something like that with an old lady, but I am not gonna let you touch me like that. You're disgusting. So You're a pig! Nag. 
George, um, I'm sorry, this is really rude. I think it's best if we leave now. Cab is on the way. Good. Yes. Yes, I understand, I think. But may I say, I enjoyed having you while you were here. Thank you. I will finish with you at the hotel. Nag. What? We gotta talk? No, we do not have to talk about it. Well, come on, Rita, we gotta talk about... that kiss. About what happened. No, oh, no. Hello? Prince. Where have you guys been? Lieutenant, what, look, it's 4 a.m. Yeah, tell me about it. Okay, yeah, when's the last time you saw Carla Kelly? Uh, what? Rita saw her earlier tonight, but she had to leave town. Yeah, well, I'm afraid she didn't. She just killed her husband. Just thought you'd want to know. Well, uh, we had a fight. Rel and I had some really bad fights, man. We had some doozies. You told me that you were leaving town. Yeah, I was leaving town. I was really scared. Roland called me from Berlin and said that he knew about me in Harv. Except he was probably not in Berlin at all. He was probably just calling me from Miami, you know? Why did he do that? <clears throat> just to get me to do what I did. Just try and scare me enough so that I would try and split before he got home. I had a real fun sense of humor that way, you know? But I didn't make it in time, and, um... He caught me. And that's what started the fight? Yeah. Well, it wasn't really a fight, you know? He was just sort of beating the crap out of me. And, um... After a few hours, I decided, hey, you know, what the hell? I just decided to spill my guts to him. I told him everything about me and Harv and everything. Well, what does everything mean? Well, um, I fudged a little bit, and then I told him that Harv had some dirt on him that I was going to rock Palm Beach with, you know? Boy, he really liked that. That really ticked him off. Anyway, then he, um... He went to his office, and then I took some sleeping pills, and I went to bed. What time was that? I don't know. I can't remember. Um, I just, I woke up, and I thought I heard something, you know? And uh, this alarm system was going really loud, and, you know, I'd taken all these pills and everything, and it was crazy. And then I, I came downstairs, and I, I was just standing there, and I had this gun in my hand and I, you know, saw Roland there lying on the floor and he was shot and he was dead. Did you do it, Carla? Did you shoot him? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I guess I did. <laughs> yeah. I hate to do this. You're under arrest. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to an attorney. If you cannot afford one, one will be appointed to you. I don't understand. I didn't kill him, all right? The shot woke me up. I went downstairs. I picked up the gun before I was even thinking about it. And then, you know, the cops came. And I figured, hey, what the hell? Why disappoint the royal palms, you know? Carla Kelly, adulteress and murderess. Hell, I'd make their year. Now, you told us last night that you killed him after he beat you. Yeah, that's because I knew I'd been set up, okay? I also know I couldn't beat this. My lawyer says I got a really good self-defense case. That's what I'm going to do. Plead guilty. But self-defense. Look, I know that I said I would, you know, try and get him for Harvey and all that stuff, but uh, I can't do it, all right? I quit. I win. Carla, we think the bingo may have committed both murders. All right, you keep a guilty plea, you ruin our chances for a tie-in. You said that Harvey showed you a disc. Do you remember if had a label on it? No. We found one at Bingham's Mark Granger Trust. It turns out it's a big charity outfit in Atlanta. You think that's a connection with Harvey's dirt? It could be. It's asking for an entry code, and we haven't been able to crack it yet. Look, do you remember, did it have a symbol, any names, 
Oh, Sam, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go to the bullpen. I'll see you there. Yeah, okay. okay. All right. Look, um, you guys are really nice people, you know? Why don't you just back off before you get cream too, okay? I'm telling you, these people are ruthless, all right? They don't like scandal. Don't you get it? Listen, Carla, for what it's worth, I know what it's like to be an outsider here. Mm -hmm. These people act like they don't see you, like they don't hear you. They make you feel like you don't matter. But don't you let them get you to start thinking like they do. Right. You fight them, Carl. You fight these bastards and you make them see you. You make them hear you. You come into a crossroads. You make a good choice. Reader, reader, reader. Unbelievable. Look. Look at that. <sighs> all right, any luck? Not luck, Sam. Brilliant reasoning. The entry code was D-I-R-T. That's all Harv ever called it on the desk. Enough to indict Bingham on the fraud charge, if nothing else. Look at this. 60 to 70 percent of all these charges are administrative costs. 90 mil a year. Jeez. I mean, it may take us some time to check out the sub-charities, but it's a safe bet that all the administrative costs went right into George Bingham's pocket. Otherwise, it would not be called D-I-R-T. -I -R -T. Yes. Amazing, <laughs> Sam. I think you were really wrong, though, about the fact that, you know, we have enough to link him to murder, though. Don't you? What? What? No, this is Harv's disc. Yeah, yeah, and it's great evidence down the line, but we'll never get a murder indictment short of a confession. Not as big as he is. Fine, he's big. I got it. All right? Come on, Muff. Got some partying to do. Hey, be careful. You know he's been checking on you. The Wellman family is in on this, so they covered for you, but that doesn't mean he isn't watching. Yeah, well, he's already watched us. Come on, Chris. Sebastian. Sebastian. You know what? Maybe what? you should come on to him. Uh, that's our only choice. I think it's a little risky with him not trusting us. Yeah. The, the Wellmans. Wellmans. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Oh, hi, what are you? I'm uh, out on bail. I changed my plea. What changed your mind? Uh, your partner, sort of. I know, I know, and I'll probably change my mind again, maybe, but, um... I don't know, I just had time to think about what you said and, uh, Harvey and everything. Excuse me. Hello? The dirt checks out. Granger Trust was one big dirty wash. Bingham gets all the administrative fees. I'm shocked. <laughs> Want to hear a real shock? Rowan Kelly was a Granger Trust director. Pocketed five million annually, of course. I think we got the dirt on Bingham. Thanks, Lieutenant. All right, thanks. Well, I think we have a job for you. You said that Bingham was always coming on to you, that he had the hots for you, right? Yeah. I mean, I don't know if I'm special or anything to him. One way to find out. Could be dangerous, but it's your shot at being seen and being heard. What do you say? Yeah. Let's do it. Good. Wait to see the party faces on all these people when they find out that George has been scamming them all these years. Mm, I just hope all the money ends up where it's supposed to. Make a lot of hungry kids very happy. Mm -hmm. George! Smashing party, really outstanding. Yes, George, all the money that you raise through charities, it must just make you feel. No, it's really you and Jack and well, all these generous people who really deserve most of the credit. Well, that's Solange. Ah, we. Oui? Get a party photo of the newlyweds. Oh, so he loves these two. I see it in your eyes. Your passion burns for her, we? Oui? You don't understand. See, I want to talk to George. Okay? My invitation just must have got lost in the mail, you know. They always do this. Yes, always do this. Always <laughs> Darling, you're going home. You're I said I want to talk to George. Okay? Excuse me? The only one who can help me. Sure. Right on schedule. Here we go. Mm -hmm. Carl. Hi, George. 
I'll handle this, Barry. I need to sneak this one off. I'll have Claudette show you to her. No, no, no. I want you to. Please, Georgie, you show me to your best room, okay? Come on. Treat me like a first-class guest. My apologies. <laughs> I'll see you in a moment. Bye. They're headed towards a master bedroom. I got it, Rita. Rooms aren't ID, but I'm looking. One super video system, George. Beth, come on over here. Have a look at this. Wow. Barry. Oh, bravo, George. Yeah. George, how many bedrooms can you have? Carla. <laughs> Not now. Truck. I got him. I'm here on business, George. Yeah. You see, Roland cut me out of his will, as I'm sure you know. So basically, I'm left to fend for myself. But I'm pretty easy. What do you say, Georgie? A couple million a year? Harvey told me he had a safety disc in his office, and it didn't turn up, so I guess you took it. But guess what, Georgie? I got one, too. You choose a strange time to discuss this. Actually, I think it's the perfect time. You either agree to my offer right now, or I'll just go out there and tell all. Now, Rita. I'm changing your business plans. Move. no more people to put on it. I'm telling you, he must have gotten out of town somehow. So the surrounding towns have been notified? Look, Rita, we've got a statewide APB, Coast Guard alert. We've covered all the bases. How could he have gotten out of town? He didn't even drive away from the house. I'm telling you, he didn't do anything. The guy just disappeared. Are you sure there's nowhere on his estate he could be hiding? No, we've covered every inch twice. What about the people at the party? No help? It's all they are is party people. Look at us like we're crazy. Yeah, everybody loves George. You mean they did? Are you kidding? I'm telling you, half these people think that Carla probably kidnapped him. You know, but that's another possibility. Maybe one of them's hiding him out. Come on, Chris. That's not a serious possibility. Why not? What, because the best people don't do things like that? No, the man is hiding out someplace around here. He, you don't just wander around with a woman at gunpoint. What makes you think he still has her with him? Yeah, that thought crossed my mind, like, all night long. You know, what we did about Bingham, we never should have put Carla on the front line. We blew it. That's... I blew it. Sam, come on. We warned her that this was going to be dangerous, right? Look, we get warned things are dangerous, Sam, all right? We understand we're cops. Yeah, we are. So come on, let's start acting like it. You're right. What? Where, where, where are you going? We'll take another look around Ritzy Town. Maybe we get lucky. Huh? You know, if it were any other part of town, we'd have a search warrant for every one of their damn houses. Now, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe the rich are above the law. Oh, come on, don't start it. Hold on. Do you realize that even if we catch this son of a bitch, we're still gonna have trouble making anything stick other than charity fraud. We never saw him leave with Carla. No, but we have our testimony that we set her up with him. She's alive, Sam. You're absolutely right. They've gotta be somewhere here in town. Come on, keep convincing me. Well, she said she had this disc called dirt, right? And he's not gonna kill her until he gets a disc, but it's not gonna happen because it doesn't exist. Damn. Let's go. What, what, what? Were you... Look, we got the Coast Guard looking for, the whole state patrol is out looking for. Where's the last place that they're gonna look? Very good. You gotta let me go, George. People are gonna be looking for me. And you too. That could be a problem. Yeah, that's right. You see, I spent the night at Larry Kinman's. Uh. I brought you home, put you to bed. 
And my car broke down, so I just walked over to Larry's. It'll be sticky. <laughs> but I've got so much incriminating footage on people in this town. I'm sure I can find friends who will verify the story. You still haven't found what you need most, George. Don't force me to hurt you, Carla. I think I've been very nice. So far. Look, George. If you kill me, then you're never gonna find the disc. <clears throat> you never had a safety disc, did you, Carla? Come on, now. Dream on, George. <laughs> <clears throat> no, we know it isn't anywhere in this house. But there really isn't time to look elsewhere. So I'm trusting my instincts. I want you to write something. Come on. <laughs> May must be on vacation. Something to the effect that you really did love Harvey, but he was breaking with you. So you killed him. Oh, and yes, uh. Roland found out about the affair. He was going to toss you back to where you'd come from. So you shot him, too. Start writing! Look, George, um... I could marry you, and then everything would be okay. You'd be safe, right? And you'd have me. Just write, Carla. a couple nights at the Beacon undercover. Now, that should have been the dream gig, right? I gotta admit, there was a couple of times there that I started to get a little bit nervous. Well, I was a little more nervous about the undercover work at the Binghams. Oh, Chris, no! Come on, we gotta talk about it. Why don't we gotta talk about because it? We gotta get it out in the open, put it in our past, all right? We're partners, and partners shouldn't kiss. I don't like that, they should. <sighs> oh, wait a minute. What is like that? What does that mean? What do I like for us? Okay? We're partners, friends. We should kiss like, say... I mean, like, like say, kissing your sister, Sam. Yeah. <laughs> so, what is your point? Are you telling me that you didn't feel anything? Like... Like, say, electricity. Electricity? Oh. Wait, wait a minute, are you... Are you asking me if it was good for me? Huh. No, 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 Sam. I'm not, no, no. No? <laughs> yes, I am. It was intense for me. You got nothing? Afraid not, Sam. No, you're kidding me. 